Recording in progress. A good Erev Shabbos, everyone. Erev Shabbos, Pajas Bracious. A new beginning. It's just incredible when you just tap into that energy of newness, that energy of, of beginning, of everything starting fresh. It's, it been, it's been like that really since Rosh Hashanah, that every single thing that's happening is the first time for the year. It's the first, it's the beginning. And now we're starting on our cycle of the year. We're starting into our, into our system into our, our regular our, our regular day-to-day activity, yontifs are over, and now we have a year to look forward to when we begin, Bracious Bar Lokim, we begin with the creation. You know, it's amazing that there are two times in the Midrashim that other Marishon has to face darkness. Darkness is a pretty frightening thing. I have to admit that I'm I'm not the most comfortable person in the dark. Camping is not like not my thing because I just worry. Darkness, things happen. We even as a people, we're in dark times where we 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 rely on our faith in dark times. We close our eyes and we say the Shema, put our hands over our eyes to reaffirm our faith in God. Specifically, when things are the darkest, before we go to sleep at night, we in Myriv we say special tefillah, special prayers that ask God to protect us and to watch over us in this night. Yaakov Avinu was worried that he was going into nighttime and therefore instituted Mairev, instituted the whole tefillah of Mairev, for to ask for special assistance from God because of the, of the darkness. Can you imagine Adam Arishon on that first day of Shabbos of his life, which was the first day of Shabbos of the world, which was the first day of Shabbos ever. He was born, he got married, and he got thrown out of Gan Eden all on Friday afternoon. I always joke, stop complaining about how busy your, your Erev Shabbos is. You ne- if you didn't have it like Adam Marishon, then you know what? It's not so bad. So Adam Marishon, the matter says that God kept the lights on. Shabbos, he kept it illuminated so that we would understand. Adam Marishon would understand how special and precious Shabbos is. And then comes Motsoi Shabbos. And the lights go out. The world gets dark. Now, there were no lights from any stadiums. There were no lights from any cities. There was nothing. Pitch black. And Anamarishan was petrified. Anamarishan didn't know what happened. He didn't know what he did. The world was, the world was over as far as he could see it. And then Akkadosh Baruch Hu gave him two stones and told him how to rub them together and had it to be able to make a fire. That's why in Motzoi Shabbos, after a whole Shabbos of not using fire, we remember the fire was created on Motsoi on, on Motsoi Shabbos on Saturday night, and we reenact that creation of fire and Adam Arishon's reaction to the fire. Adam Arishon was so appreciative, was so blown away by the fact that he could now illuminate the world, he could do something to bring a little light into the darkness. He said a bracha. Baruch atah Hashem alakein amalach alam borei maorei aish. And we do that every Mozart Shabbos. We look at our fingernails. The, the first things that were created in Adam Arishon, what he was created out of, and we catch the flame in our fingernails to remember that very first Mozart Shabbos. The Medrash tells us of another time that Adam Arishon confronted darkness. Months later, when the seasons changed and the days started to shorten, Adam Arishon looked at it and said, this is my fault. It's getting darker and darker and darker every day. It's getting darker a little bit earlier. There's a little less light in the world. And Adam Arishon said, this is the death that God said that I I brought into the world because of eating from the tree. And what I'm watching is, is that world slowly disappear. And Adam Arishon was petrified. So he davened, he trusted, he prayed, and he waited. And eventually, the days started to get longer. And day by day, there was more sunlight. Day by day, the darkness set in at a later time. And other Marishan looked at it and said, This is Minago Shalom. This is the way the world works. It's fascinating that these are the two 
stories that were told in the Medrash of other Mauritians' relationship with darkness. I think there's a very specific message that's being taught out by, the, by, by these two. Because every person has darkness in their life. There is always going to be some darkness, whether it's self-imposed or whether it's coming from the events and things that are happening around us. And what the Medrash is teaching us is that there are two ways to deal with darkness. The overall way, underlying everything we do, there has to be a and bitachon, there has to be faith and trust. There has to be prayer. There has to be tefillah. God, get me through this darkness. Lie me down to sleep. Keep me protected. Take care of me. But then there are times when we can be proactive and we can actually get rid of some of that darkness. We could take two stones and we can rub them together. We could take the things of our life and we can, we can make from them incredible light. We can bring light and brightness into this world. There are times where we don't just have to sit back and wait and rely on our bitachon. There are times where we can act, where we can do something proactive and we can bring about an incredible amount of light. Baruch atah Hashem, blessed are you God, that you create all kinds of opportunities to bring light into this world. And you give me the ability and the strength and the fortitude to be able to go and to bring that light into this world. And what other Marishan is teaching us is that sometimes you do have to sit back and let the Rebbein Shalom carry out his plans and do what he wants to do. But there are those moments in life where you're given an opportunity to be proactive and to do something, to make that light come about. And as the year begins, that has to be one of those foundation pieces that we put into the new package of ourselves that we're building this year. That I want to stay aware and I want to stay cognizant and I want to keep my eyes open to be able to catch those moments where I can bring light into this world. We're in a dark, dark world. But we're in a dark world with an ability to be able to kindle lights. And I don't want to miss those opportunities. I want to be able to be awake and aware to be able to grab those moments where I can bring some ore into the choshech some light into the darkness that permeates this world. Whether it's through reaching out to someone and to to inspiring them with Shabbos, whether it's learning with someone, whether it's doing a chesed, doing a kindness, whether it's being there for somebody else, whatever that light is, what other Mauritian is teaching us, Sometimes you got to grab the bull by the horns. You got to rub a little bit. You got to work a little bit. But then the ore, the light that is going to come from those actions is going to be so incredibly bright and it's going to help illuminate not only your world, but illuminate the world for everyone else. These are the kinds of thoughts as the year begins, we look at the parsha. There are so many of them. But to grab these little foundation points, these little things that we can base in beautiful actions on, we're trying to keep our eyes open for little messages, for little hints, little directives that come from the parsha that can help us build beautiful lives for ourselves lives that will be very different, years that will be very different than the years we've lived up until now. Everyone should have a beautiful, wonderful, amazing, illuminated Shabbos. And as Shabbos is over, on Mozart's Shabbos, when we make Havdalah, we should look at that light and say, this is my life. 
I want to be able to rub things together and to be able to bring a little bit of light to illuminate this incredible darkness. Have a beautiful Shabbos.